this week on Jambar TV, we'll be discussing HackYSU and their latest competition. Then we'll talk about the in-person art and technology lecture series at the McDonough Museum. We'll also discuss the baseball team and their return to Eastwood Field. Welcome to Jambar TV. I'm Angie Gopal Krishnan. And I'm Chris Duritz. The Student Government Association's presidential elections came to a close April 6th. Nico Masterides was elected as the new president of SGA with McGuire Franco as his vice president. The two will begin as president and vice president in the fall mm -hmm. semester. Following every election, grievance forms can be filled out and filed with the SGA. Forms must be in regards to policy that may have been violated. Samantha Schaefer explains. Anybody can submit them. Um, they like, what is happening? They're submitted through an online form on the SGA website. They come to my office and get reviewed by the elections board to see if they warrant a hearing. Schaefer works with the elections board to bring student awareness to the code of conduct. YS Unity held a meeting Tuesday, April 12th, discussing the reformation of their club and the Ohio House Bill 616. The group met in order to set up future events and to recruit new members while focusing on the bill proposal. Rose McClurkin explained the club's view of the bill. It's kind of an expansion of a bill that already existed. So there was a critical race theory bill that got introduced and it was to ban that curriculum, any diversity or um, intersectionality were like the key words that they like to use. Um, it's banning any of that curriculum from being into Ohio schools. The bill will not only apply to public schools, but any non-academic institution that receives public funding. McClurkin explained how students can become involved in the politics that surround the bill. Um, we also have a beautiful, stunning petition that Michael made us. And you can sign that, and we, I am pretty sure, we are going to present that to the House. Many in YS Unity have high hopes despite the bill, including Nathaniel Hunter. Me personally, I'm a very optimistic person. I believe deep down every person's good, but something made them not good. That totally. If you're interested in joining the club or learning about House Bill 616, you can reach out to them by sending an email to the address on screen. The Youngstown Association of Student Psychologists hosted a presentation last week to spread awareness and insight on autism. The event featured guest speakers from the Autism Society of the Mahoning Valley. Accessibility Services graduate assistant Morgan Davidson wants members of the public to get more engaged with learning about autism. professionals or any other member of the public who might work with autistic mm -hmm. individuals so that they can learn about what autism is, what does this group want professionals to know. And it's also supposed to talk about their organization. The guest speakers are from the Autism Society of the Mahoning Valley. For more information on the YASSP, visit its Facebook page, and for more information on the Autism Society of the Mahoning Valley, visit its website. April is scattered with showers and celebrations on campus. The month holds many holidays that are celebrated by different religions, and YSU strives to make campus an equal and safe place to do so. Events happening on campus this month range from Islamic Awareness Week, which started April 11th, to weekly meetings and groups put on by the Coalition for Christian Outreach. There is a group for everyone, welcoming them with open arms. Around the area, local synagogues are preparing for Passover. With Easter approaching, the CCO president, Allison Connor, invites anyone and everyone to join in and learn about the Christian faith. You don't have to sign up, you just show up. Um and you are welcomed and you are loved regardless of what religion um, you are. With so much diversity on campus, it's important that those differences are supported and able to flourish. And so to have like a club like this allows students to have a space where they can grow in their faith. 
The dates and times these religious events happening can be found under our story posted in this week's edition of the Jam Bar. Come monkey around at Go Ape in Cleveland. The YSU Rec is getting a group together to take for a day of fun. Go Ape is an obstacle course 50 feet in the air that includes zip lining and Tarzan swings. Coordinator of the Adventure Rec at YSU, RJ Markowitz, knows students don't want to miss it. College is that time to where you're supposed to step outside of your comfort zone a little bit. Um, and you don't want to look back on that and think, oh man, I, I wish I would have. I wish I would have done this or I wish I would have, you know, taken that risk. The trip is April 16th from 10 a.m. to 5 p.m. and all of the transportation will be provided. The event is open to all students and members of the rec center. The cost is $70. Register under the store tab on the campus recreation page on the YSU website. Coding and crafting tech is the key for success for some YSU students. Reporter Christopher Gillett has a look at the Hack YSU event. Hack YSU was held last weekend. This competition saw YSU students compete in a hackathon from April 8th to April 10th. YSU students and high school students paired up and competed to build some kind of technical marvel with their computers. The competition and hackathon was set up by the YSU Computer Club. Samuel Hoffman is the president of the Computer Club and the coordinator of Hack YSU. He has participated in the event since high school and went into the competition's past as well as some of his own creations. Um, I've done uh, music programs, um, uh, music production, stuff like that. I've done uh, robotics in the past. I, I made a tank robot <laughs> for one of, one of the days because I was bored. Um, we get a good mix of everything just because we have people in the organization that aren't just IT majors, so we get like psychology students, biotech students, so you get a really good mix of uh, different programs. Ryan Lalchand is the vice president of the computer club and the vice coordinator of Hack YSU. He's explained his favorite parts of Hack YSU. But really, it, it's just seeing how satisfied a lot of the students are with the progress that they've made on their projects, what they've learned, being able to put that on their resume, and especially for the, the winners. Uh, to be able to have that, that confidence moving forward is, is a great thing to see. The Computer Club has also absorbed the former eSports Club. For more information on that, pick up this week's issue of the Jambar paper. A D&D &D visual novel, as well as a control access project, snagged honorable mentions. A bus tracker on the YSU app took third. A card game placed second. And in first was a typing game, created by Zachary Richards, Konstantin Sumanoff, Ivan Ladutska, Nathan Gallagher, and Gloriana Mendel. This was a team of YSU students and a high school student. If students are interested in the YSU Computer Club, they can go to their website. For Jambar TV, I'm Christopher Gillette. The warmer weather has hit the Ohio Valley, or has it? Cheyenne, can we expect these spring temperatures to last? Those temps are looking promising, but nothing is certain in Ohio. You'll want to stay tuned because I'll also have a look at the state's radar coming up. The feeling when my hands are on the piano, it's become comforting. It's somewhere that I can express myself. I go to Youngstown State University and my passion is playing music. YSU is allowing me to take what I love and turn it into a career and do it every single day of my life. I'm Alyssa and I'm YM Proud. You're not waiting to see what the world has in store for you. It's more about what you have in store for the world. All you need is the opportunity. All you need are the resources of a large university and the advantages of a personalized academic setting where you can experience new worlds in the arts and sciences, business and education and make them your own. We are where you shape your future. We are Youngstown State University and proud. The communication department is much more than media or delivering a speech. The YSU communication department offers programs in telecommunication, journalism, and communication studies. We inspire creativity. We encourage each student's passion. We explore new and advanced technologies that connect the human race. 
The communication programs at YSU ensure that every student is prepared and experienced for the outside workforce for life after YSU. Join the Jam Bar and find your voice when you tell the next big story. Become a host of Rookery Radio and gain hands-on experience, or get involved with TV productions like Light the Wick, Penguin Rundown, and Jam Bar TV. YSU's communication department is much more than a department, an education, or a degree. It's a home for passionate individuals, for students to find and pursue what they love. Hello everyone and welcome back. I'm Shina Gibbons with this week's weather outlook. I know I've been loving the warmer temps despite the off and on rain, but this upcoming weekend is already looking clearer. Today is going to be cloudy for the most part, but the rain will stay away. I've got the state of Ohio behind me and the rain is going to almost circle around us. Saturday is looking really clear with a low chance of rain. By Sunday, everything will have moved out of the area in the entire state, but despite those skies clearing out, I do have some bad news regarding the temps. Looking at my four-day forecast, today is the best day of the weekend with a high of 68 degrees and only a 25% chance of rain. Get out there and enjoy the warm weather because it will not last long. Tomorrow we'll see a fall of 10 degrees from today with a high chance of scattered showers throughout the day. By Sunday, the temps will have hit their lowest and it's going to feel like March all over again. On Monday, there's a high chance for a rain system to push its way into the valley by the later part of the day, but the early morning and the midday will be clear. That wraps up for my weather forecast, but you want to stick around because Caitlin McCarthy has the latest in local art. You're here to be part of something bigger, to make things happen. For you, college is about knowledge being shared, and learning experiences that aren't limited to the classroom. On campus, you want to matter. It's about engaging every day, building relationships with students, with mentors, with the community, in the heart of a reinvented city. We are that something bigger. We are Youngstown State University and proud. You're looking to your future, preparing for your goals, and they're closer than you think. Because here, success is part of the plan. It's a place where academic and social opportunities are meant to prepare you for life, not just the next four years. You'll be equipped to face new challenges and turn hard work into a career. You're ready for your success to take root, and here's where it starts. We are Youngstown State University, and proud. Wait, what? What's going on right now? Yeah, man. Exercise. I don't know. I don't know if I should be talking to you right now. It's got lots of benefits. Mm. Okay. The benefits of exercise include increased levels of energy, higher quality of sleep, better muscle and bone strength, improved memory, and clearer skin. Growing up, I love figuring out how things work, putting things together. I love being able to come up with an idea, design it, just the whole process of creating things. I go to school here at Youngstown State and my passion is 3D design. I chose YSU because all the equipment, the research being done here, it's like a playground for me. I'm Alex and I'm Y I'm proud. Hello and welcome back to Jambar TV. I'm Caitlin McCarthy. A graphic arts expedition is at the Butler now through May 29th. Henry Shore has more. Artwork by Jim Starenko is on display at the Butler Institute of American Art. This is the first time a fine art museum is displaying Starenko's work. <laughs> museum Executive Director Lou Zona shed some light on the decision to house this exhibit. It's hard to believe that he's getting up in years now because we, we, uh, his characters are so youthful. So right. dynamic, and uh, not to say that he's not even in, in his older age, uh, dynamic. But he has quite a history, and uh, we're, proud to, we're proud that the ex exhibition has taken place, and we have it here at the Butler. Kyle Gleason, who works at a comic shop in Cleveland, drove in for the exhibition with some co-workers. He explains why Starenko is so important to the history of graphic art. 
everyone I've talked to who's well versed in in like in comics, especially Silver Age comics and stuff like you know older 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 works, uh, have all known Stranko's name. Um, they all know his art immediately just by sight. Uh, which is something that I, I've even easily been able to tap into just because it's, it's, it's so prominent. It's very it's singular. So um, it's been definitely an easy way uh, to understand some of the finer uh, appreciations of, of his art. Uh, and so far, he's one of the most respected that I've seen. The Starenko exhibit is displayed on the second floor of the Butler through May 29th. Admission, as always, is free. For Jambar TV, I'm Henry Shore. Poets and poetry lovers alike gather at the McDonough Museum to celebrate National Poetry Month. Aileen Blaine has more. Last week's poetry reading featured nine students' works with three to five poems each. Themes range from love and relationships to experimentation with literary devices like alliteration and onomatopoeia. First year communications major Riss Raley says words can have a powerful impact on people. To walk through the world and be able to be kind and passionate and well-spoken and well-thought, that saves lives in a way that a vet would or a doctor would with words and scalpels. Biology freshman Sarah Kahn says inspiration can come from anything. If you're ever willing to pursue poetry, make sure to also draw from, from the things that make you different, the things that make you special. Upcoming poetry open mic nights and sessions are in the works. Check out YSU's Poetry Club for more information. For Jambar TV, I'm Aileen Blaine. The Beecher Art and Technology Lecture Series returned in person for the first time this semester. Executive producer Elizabeth Koss went to the lecture. On Tuesday, April 12th, the McDonough Museum hosted the Beecher Art and Technology Lecture Series with artist Scott Turry, who is also a faculty member at the University of Pittsburgh. Within the McDonough Museum, visitors were able to watch the lecture and learn about the connections of photography, acrylic paintings, and the animations of Turry. He spoke on some of his inspirations behind his work. Most of the material comes from things like photographs that I've taken, um, drawings, so I have an archive of a lot of photographs and drawings. Um, I work digitally and uh, almost like in some ways like a collage artist and I make uh, digital images that become models for my paintings. Alongside his animations, Terry oftentimes will pair instrumental music to his visual cues to help form a nonverbal narrative that helps it become more about the art and less about the artist. Uh, in terms of the look and you know their their hand is usually not seen in the in the work so I, uh, they, it becomes less about me as a artist hopefully and more about just what the work looks like as a kind of manifestation of the images Youngstown State University professor Dana Sperry brought Terry to the university because of his interest in his work he has some work that is painting but then some of his work is animation as well um, and so his work sort of goes back and forth between digital and analog and <clears throat> which is what I mean that's part of the reason we were interested in having him come for the art technology lecture series. The series featuring Terry was the last of the semesters but the series will return in the fall with new artists. For Jambar TV I'm Elizabeth Koss. For student life section but after a quick break we'll be back with the latest look at the men's baseball team so stay tuned. The feeling when my hands are on the piano, it's become comforting. It's somewhere that I can express myself. I go to Youngstown State University and my passion is playing music. YSU is allowing me to take what I love and turn it into a career and do it every single day of my life. I'm Alyssa and I'm Y and Proud. The communication department is much more than media or delivering a speech. The YSU communication department offers programs in telecommunication, journalism, and communication studies. We inspire creativity. We encourage each student's passion. 
we explore new and advanced technologies that connect the human race. The communication programs at YSU ensure that every student is prepared and experienced for the outside workforce for life after YSU. Join the Jam Bar and find your voice when you tell the next big story. Become a host of Rookery Radio and gain hands-on experience, or get involved with TV productions like Light the Wick, Penguin Rundown, and Jam Bar TV. YSU's communication department is much more than a department, an education, or a degree. It's a home for passionate individuals, for students to find and pursue what they love. Hello everyone, I'm John Ostopowitz, and let's hop right into this week's YSU Sports. The YSU lacrosse team got back in the win column after beating the University of Akron for the second time this season. Freshman Natalie Calandra Ryan led the 17-14 victory with seven scored goals. Graduate student Ali Corinne stayed hot as she netted five goals to contribute to the effort. Consistency is key for Corinne as this is her fifth straight game of four or more goals this season. Graduate student Savannah Clark had a team high of five saves while protecting the net against the Zips offense. Corinne has been a leader so far this season, scoring multiple goals in every game. Corinne feels the team has its groove back and they are back in the win column. I think the way our coaches put it, our backs were against the wall, so I mean we kind of dug ourselves a hole in those couple games and it was great to get out of it and we play the way we've been playing every day in practice and it was great to put that on the field. The Penguins are back in action as they'll head to Michigan to face off against the University of Detroit Mercy this Saturday, April 16th. The last game between these two ended in a 12-11 win for the Penguins back in March. You can catch a recap of the upcoming game on YSUsports.com. The Youngstown State University track and field team split squads to compete at the Mountain Union University's John Hammond Open and Tennessee's Tennessee Relays through Thursday, April 7th through Saturday, April 9th. Over the three-day stretch, the Penguins went to work, posting a total of six event victories, with four of them coming from day one. The first day of competition ended with junior Dominic Perry, senior Lauren Dolak, senior Maggie Sebest, and junior Alexis Pratter earning event victories with their performance at Mount Union Stadium. In the men's shot put, Perry went to work as he posted a 16.71 meter throw to earn his second event victory of the outdoor season. Dolak clocked a personal best time in the women's 1500 meter run with a time of 4.46.27 and finished the event with the fastest time to earn her first event victory. The women's 3000 meter Sebest finished as at the top as she completed the day with the time of 11.46.61. In the women's long jump, Pratter was the only Youngstown State competitor in the event and posted the furthest mark. Prater finished with a personal best meter leap of 5.61. On day two of the competition, senior Sean Peterson and junior Ty Hunt tapped individual event victories at the Tennessee Relays. Peterson finished the day with a time of 1.51.06 in the men's 800 meter run. In his lonely, only legal jump of the day, Hunt posted a 708 meter mark to take the victory in the men's long jump. The final day of the Tennessee Relay, senior Zach Gem set a new program record in the men's discus throw with a 58.02 meter mark. Honestly, didn't have a great uh, evening in shot put the day before. Um, my girlfriend was down at the meet with me, Molly. Um, and all I could think about is just having fun and, and just doing the thing that God made me to do. The Penguins are back in action today through tomorrow, April 16th, for the two-day Bison Outdoor Classic. The YSU baseball team looked to get its op open 10-game homestand back on track following matchups against Northern Kentucky and Niagara University. Assistant producer Kyle Wills is at Eastwood Field. The YSU baseball team is still looking for their first home win of the season following a three-game series sweep to Northern Kentucky and a loss to Niagara. In Game 1, April 8th, Youngstown State only mustered three hits in the 9-0 defeat. Seniors Patrick O'Shaughnessy and Lucas Nasanti and junior Andre Good provided the only hits for the club. Northern Kentucky used two four-run innings in the 7th and 9th to power past the Penguins. The next day, Northern Kentucky once again provided an offensive outburst in the 15-3 loss. 
After the North scored three in the top of the second inning, senior Dylan Schwarmer came up with an RBI base hit to put the team on the board. The Penguins eventually tied the game following an RBI walk from Patrick O'Shaughnessy and an RBI fielder's choice by Nassanti. The North scored 12 straight runs to seal the second game of the series. The men tried to salvage the Sears as they scored seven runs in game three, but ultimately were defeated 9-7. Nassanti, Good, and Braden O'Shaughnessy all finished with multi-hit performances, while Desanio, Schwarmer, and redshirt freshman Chase Franken each recorded a hit as well. With 15 strikeouts offensively as a team, Nassanti said they knew their approach had to differ from the previous day. We knew we had to cut it down. We had to find ways to kind of put the ball in play. And uh, I think that's probably what some of the success that you've seen in today's game was um, kind of due to cutting out the strikeouts and putting some balls in play. And, um, you know, it was a little better today still. Not satisfied, obviously, we didn't win. So, but we're moving in the right direction, I think. Head coach Dan Bertolini said the first two games of the series didn't feature the performances he wanted from the team, but he liked the way the team scratched and clawed. You know, I, I give I give a lot of credit to Northern Kentucky. They 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 played a good series this weekend. They pitched, um, they got hits when they needed to, and, and they played the game, you know, really hard. And um, I'm just happy with the way that we kind of battled today. At least it, it's a sign of some positivity moving into the next week. The baseball team looked to earn its first win of the season at Eastwood Field on April 12th against Niagara University. However, despite out hitting the Purple Eagles, the Penguins came out on the wrong end of the 5-3 decision. Braden O'Shaughnessy and Asante provided eight of the team's nine hits. O'Shaughnessy finished four for five at the dish, including a two-run home run and RBI double, while Asante finished a perfect four for four with a double and two runs scored. However, three home runs from Niagara helped the Purple Eagles fly away with the victory. O'Shaughnessy said he hasn't been seeing the high heat he's been looking for recently, but didn't waste a swing when those pitches came against Niagara. Just hunting fastballs as usual. Uh, I got a lot more today than I have been in the past, so I take advantage of it and it worked well. The baseball team was back in action last night, April 14th, when they took on the Milwaukee Panthers. For more on that game, make sure to check out YSUSports.com. The baseball team will be back in action tonight and tomorrow, April 15th and 16th, when they once again take on the Milwaukee Panthers. I'm Kyle Wills, Jambar TV. The YSU softball team had a Sunday matinee to start off its latest batch of games this week. The inclement weather only allowed one game versus Cleveland State University, which resulted in a 3-1 loss for the Penguins. Fifth-year pitcher Ellie Buffenbarger was given a rare loss when she gave up three earned runs in the game. The Penguins' lone hit came from junior catcher Conchetta Rinaldi's solo home run. Rinaldi regularly catches for Buffenbarger and talked about the mindset and pitching process in tough games like this one. She knows um, what we can do, obviously everything that we accomplished last year. So Ellie knows, um, obviously we can do it. It's just about putting the pieces together at the right time, for sure. Up next was a two-game series at Niagara University, which resulted in losses in both games. Game one, seven to six loss, saw junior Megan Turner go for a four for five with two doubles and two RBIs. Game two's two to zero matchup was a tough one as the Gwens only mustered two hits both by five-year Yasmin Romero, Buffenbarger, and sophomore Sophie Howell both gained a loss in their pitching performances. Wednesday's result of the doubleheader at St. Bonaventura University are posted on YSUSports.com. That rounds out our sportscast, but let's throw things over to Cheyenne for a quick weather recap. Thanks, John. Like I said earlier, the temps are dropping, but the clouds are parting. We can expect some sunshine for the holidays. Well, that wraps up our show for today, Penguins. We'll be back next week with more news, students, sports, and more. As always, stay safe, Penguins.
Support for Jambar TV is provided in part by the YSU Foundation and the Jane F. Lamb Charitable Foundation. Thank you.